Welcome to Mind Money Balance, the no guilt, no shame podcast to help you get your mind and money in balance. I'm your host, Lindsay. I'm a financial therapist and coach, woman of color, and popcorn connoisseur. I am so glad you're here. Let's go. Before we dive into today's podcast episode, I just wanted to wish a happy Hanukkah for those of you who are celebrating as you get close to the end of these eight nights of light and peace and love. I hope you and yours are celebrating in a way that is safe and meaningful and allowing you to see the silver linings and the light within this year. Today's guests are Therapist Refresh. They are a duo of two psychotherapists, Sharon Gold Steinberg and Karen Lund. Therapist Refresh is a collaboration between the two of them that is on a mission to help therapists feel more fulfilled, inspired, and effective in their work. Being two psychotherapists, they knew what was missing and they hope to create this, this service to provide essential resources and inspiration for therapists, including meditation, live classes of contemplative practices, consultations and trainings, self-paced video courses. Whew, they offer a, a variety variety of things to help therapists depending on what their unique needs are. They believe that a fulfilling and sustainable career as a therapist is possible. So I want to share with you a couple of stories about both Sharon and Karen. So Sharon, interestingly, when I was wrestling with how to, to set my own fees in my therapy practice, she gave me a beautiful exercise, which was like, look, Lindsay, if you were hiring somebody to do all of the things that you were doing and you wanted to pay them in accordance with the work they're doing and also offer them appropriate time off and time for personal professional growth, what would that look like in that shift to zoom out and go, okay, what would I need to pay somebody else? if they were coming on board to do all the work that I'm doing was so helpful. So anytime I'm working on pricing with my clients and grow a profitable practice from the inside out, I have Sharon's exercise and her words in my mind, helping me navigate that conversation with them. And Karen is a yoga teacher in addition to being a therapist. And she and I graduated grad school from the school of social work at U of M university of Michigan. Sorry, I forgot. I forget. Not all my listeners are here in the Midwest. (laughs) We graduated around the same time, and she really paved a trail of jumping into private practice, of folding in yoga and and somatic practices into her work. And I'd always looked up to her as, you know, this young woman who was knew what she wanted and and went after it. And so I'm so excited to have this conversation with both Sharon and Karen and to help you learn a little bit more about what Therapist Refresh is, but also what it's like to go into business and cultivate a space and what that looked like and, and how they made wise decisions in their business doing something that isn't just traditional psychotherapy. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Sharon, welcome to the Mind Money Balance podcast. I'm so excited to have you both here. And why don't I have you each kind of share a little bit about who you are professionally and personally. Sharon, why don't you kick it off? Uh, Well, my name is Sharon Gold Steinberg, and I am a clinical psychologist practicing in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I've been doing that for a long time now. Started out mostly working with kids and families, now specialize in working with adults and trauma. Wonderful. And Karen? Yeah. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for having us. I'm Karen Lund, trained as a social worker, work as a therapist in private practice in Ann Arbor as well, um, where I also live. And I'm also a yoga teacher. So I also specialize in working with trauma, but um, see kids, teens, adults across the lifespan. And of course, in addition to being in private practice, both of us are involved in Therapist Refresh, which we're about to talk more about with you. Yeah. So Karen, take it away. What is Therapist Refresh? Yeah. Therapist Refresh is an effort by therapists, Sharon and I, for therapists. And we aim to help other therapists feel more fulfilled, balanced, and inspired in their work, just really recognizing the risk for burnout and also the opportunities for incredible inspiration and meaning in our jobs. Yeah. And Sharon, can you give everyone a little backstory on how Therapist Refresh came to be? 
Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. Well, actually, Karen and I have known each other a little bit longer than that. We first met when I was teaching a class along with two other therapists about uh, therapeutic resonance. And uh, Karen was a student and she was really a wonderful student. But I think (laughs) for her, that was uh, her introduction to a certain approach to therapy that um, was really meaningful to me. And then I found out that she was a yoga teacher and I started stalking her yoga classes. <laughs> and, um, Back when we could do things in person, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and on Wednesday nights, she taught this most beautiful yin yoga class, which is, you know, taking on poses for a longer time with the intention of really helping your body to let go and your mind to relax. And she brought in her therapist self, her wonderful human self and her yoga teacher self. And it was just so soothing for me. And I felt like this is such, this was my best medicine in the week because without talking, without using insight, I would really relax. I would get in touch with what was going on inside me deeply. I felt really supported when I was used to being the one giving support. Yeah. And I I just want to add that. I think that is exactly what therapist refresh is, is like, I came to a student in Mm -hmm. Sharon's class that she was talking about always thinking about as a therapist, like, what do I do next really in like my doer thinker self, and really learned about how presence can make such a difference and being regulated. So we really help therapists learn how to approach their work, no matter what their theoretical orientation, and then also do a lot of embodied regulation, which is something that I tried to bring to these yin classes. And Sharon, I you were also a wonderful student, oh, thank you. too. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had this sort of mutual cultivating of friendship and really appreciating each other's uh, kind of healing qualities. And then I came back from a conference where I um, went to a presentation on vicarious trauma, the kind of stressful impact that therapists and other professionals can take on from hearing the stories of other mm. people's trauma. Yeah. The risk for burnout that can come from that, the risk of developing PTSD symptoms mm. from witnessing what someone else has experienced. Mm. So as well as Therapist Refresh having this core goal of enhancing fulfillment and sustainability in people's careers, it is also to help with how to treat trauma and how to uh, prevent vicarious trauma. So I came back from this conference and I went to one of Karin's yoga classes where I was like, oh, this is part of what helps me with vicarious trauma and said to her, we got to do something. (laughs) And we started thinking about how to just offer classes for therapists locally in person back when we could do that, that were that kind of combined both uh, my teachings around resonance and Karin's around embodied practice of resourcing. Yeah. And I had the honor and privilege of being able to attend quite a few of those Mm -hmm. therapist refresh Mm -hmm. classes Mm -hmm. in person. And what I always loved about them was that all I had to do was show up, right? Mm -hmm. The hardest thing I had to do was register and block my calendar. And from there, I just had to walk into that space and know that I would be cared for. And for anybody in the helping and healing professions, we're often on, right? Like you were saying, Mm -hmm. like, what's coming up next? What am I learning? Who's my next client? When do I have to get my notes done? It's, it's perpetual go, go, go. And we often have to show up as like calm Mm -hmm. and grounded. So it's, it's this duality of being really busy inside and then also having to model for your clients, the importance of like groundedness and staying, staying still and staying calm. So I loved being able to show up to your classes. How did you kind of it sounds like it happened very organically, Therapist Refresh, with these offerings. And I know that you're, you're business partners, truly. Mm-hmm. And so how did you navigate those conversations mm-hmm. around becoming business partners? What did those conversations look like? Yeah, so those conversations are still ongoing and happen at different iterations, especially as our business builds organically. And so I've been really grateful um, just to have communication tools and an openness and a friendship and a trust with Sharon that we can keep coming back to it over and over and saying, like, how are things feeling for you with with money? You know, amidst other things, like how are things feeling for you workload-wise and content and all of that? But Lindsay, I know this is like 
the heart of what you share as well, but like, it's okay to talk about money and it's okay to have asks Mm -hmm. and to say when something is feeling really good and to say when something is not feeling so good and even to set financial goals for yourself. So I, I know that's not like a super concrete answer, but I think that it's something, especially now that our business is growing, we've just seen vicarious trauma exposure skyrocket for therapists this year. So we're sort of in it right now, like coming up with more offerings, ones that actually um, are resources or courses that cost money. And so this is like a really new venture for us too, to be in that conversation with one another and figure out how do we navigate all that while keeping the core heart and value of Therapist Refresh, which is like a generative heart-centered offering that we want all therapists to be able to access resources regardless of their income or current financial state. And Mm -hmm. one thing that I've noticed about your work is that you have kind of similar to me, you have these tiers of ways that people can work with you. Mm -hmm. So you offer, I find myself coming back to your free meditations again and again that are on the website and also on Insight Timer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you offer these community offerings, the Monday mantra letters Mm -hmm. are so helpful through the email. And then I know that some of your online offerings are free and some of them do have a cost associated with it. Sharon, did you guys intentionally set it up that way or did it just happen that you started offering things for $10 here and $25 Mm -hmm. there? How did that kind of (laughs) unfold? You know, it's always been a a passion project for us. And I think as therapists, as creative and nurturing people, it always came first to us, the ideas about we want to offer this. Wouldn't this be a great way to help people? We really want that. You know, how can we provide that? So I think we sort of sometimes, what is it they call like the cart gets ahead of the horse. And we also started thinking both, this is just something we want to give for both of us you know, our primary incomes come from our successful private practices, Mm -hmm. which allowed this to sort of start as something really fulfilling for us. But then we've had to face the challenge if we are saying to other people, it's important that you make your work sustainable, (laughs) including how you get paid for your time, how much time you devote to something. We've had to say to ourselves, how do we make this sustainable for us? which means needing to earn some money at it. So maybe at times we can cut back a little bit on our other work so that we can do the clinical work we love, the therapist refresh work we love, and like have families and sleep and you know, <laughs> be out in nature and live the life we're trying to help people do. So we've had to often back up and say, wait a minute, how do we make this sustainable? Mm-hmm. And then how do you charge for something that comes from a generous place? Yeah. So that is a question I would love to ask you, (laughs) which is how do you charge for these types of offerings? You know, so many of the therapists that I work with and that listen to this podcast, they get stuck there. They get stuck that generosity means giving things away for free. And the two of you have really cultivated this business where there are, all of the offers are generous and some have a different expense than others. So how do you decide what gets a certain price tag or, or when you charge for things? What do those conversations look like? (laughs) Yeah, I think that one thing, and perhaps many other therapists listening to this can relate to this is Sharon and I are both multi-passionate. And so I think that has actually allowed us to have some amount that's maybe like less methodical and data driven about pricing, but more about which passions and commitments of ours drive our income more and which are might just be passions that sort of fill us up in other ways because part of a sustainable career isn't just making an income that's sustainable which is a very important part of it but making sure that you balance that out with not burning yourself out by working too many hours and doing things that fill you up with energy Generally speaking, what we've done is keep a number of our resources forever free. And those are just, you know, we just like know that that's our meditations, that's our Monday mantra, perhaps some other things as we continue to grow. 
And it tends to be that the things that promote regulation are a little more excessively priced, working up to CEU classes for therapists. And part of that is because if we think about where we put our money, time, energy, and training, that's something that Sharon and I can really stand behind, that we've done a lot of work, are giving like high quality information in these courses. And also know that like, you know, accessing a CEU course that feels creative and interesting and full of those little clinical wisdom nuggets is quite rewarding as a therapist too. So I think that's been generally how we've scaled it, but we haven't gone so far as to say like, according to the market data, you know, this is what this should be priced, which might be something that we need to think about and grow into in the future, but we're not there quite yet. And I think for both of us, the things that we do that are more traditional have been easier for us to charge. Like there is a sense of what the range that people will pay for a therapy session. And it's kind of more of a medical model. And that's been easier for each of us personally, I think. And then CEU continuing education courses for professionals, we could kind of say, well, what do we pay per credit hour? What feels fair? Some of our offerings are a little more creative. And I don't... as we come up with things that are a little different than what the market offers, like our, our uh, refresh classes, which um, combine movement and breath work and meditation, and they look different every week. It's just bringing together different contemplative practices to kind of take care of the body and soul of therapists and allied healers. We kind of think, well, is it kind of like how yoga classes are priced? You know, it doesn't quite, it's not how continuing education is priced. We kind of go with like, what would you pay for that, Karin? What feels right to you? <laughs> what do we think is accessible to a range of people? And, and our refresh classes keep changing price. Right. In part, yeah. <laughs> because we're trying to see what do we have to do to get ourselves out there? What does an in-person class cost versus now a virtual class? Mm-hmm. If we have a smaller class or we have more students. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or offering with a range, you know, kind of with a suggested donation. So we both feel like for the time we're putting in to create things and offer them that we're being compensated, but also we're not turning away someone who needs it because they're working for an agency doing the very hardest work as a young social worker and don't have the same disposable income as somebody in a private practice doing mm-hmm. psychotherapy. Mm-hmm. So we keep shifting and experimenting a little bit to see kind of what feels right to us and what seems to attract uh, an audience as well. Yeah. And what I've noticed, I've noticed a couple of things in, in knowing you both and in following this journey that you are on is that you were mostly in person prior to the pandemic. You had your meditations that you could access anywhere on the go, but how did the pandemic shift or shape the way that you are offering services? Yeah, I think in a couple of ways. I think um, the, the piece that I will speak to, and then Sharon, I would love for you to jump in, but I think one is the content So just knowing that the pandemic is like a collective stressor at the least, collective trauma, you know, is really quite accurate that we're all living through. And that has just been compounded by, I mean, other crises that we are living through right now as well. And so I think one is really shifting the content to be more specifically about burnout, vicarious trauma, the emotional toll, therapists and other, you know, allied healers and mental health workers this year. So I think that the pandemic, you know, not just shifted, I know, of course, we like went online. And what does that mean for virtual classes and all of that? But I also just really want to speak to the content, because I think that just kind of blossomed into things like workshops on vicarious trauma, being more focused on having, um, frequent refresh classes, especially in this fall, we did quite a few. So that that's one way I think it really inspired a focused content this year. Right. And I think we also started increasing our social media presence because we felt like therapists are working extra hours. Mm -hmm. They're taking on more because their clients are more distressed, had this new uh, challenge of our clients are concerned about many of the same things each hour as opposed to more variety and things that we were worried about. So it was this real wish to kind of be there. Mm-hmm. And then there's also been this hope like, wow, maybe this will help us reach more people as well. So 
I mean, we really miss the in-person Friday refresh classes because that was so cool to be in a room with people in an intimate group. And at the same time, when we've done some of them online and we have people there from three different time zones and you know, somebody from Canada as well as the U.S., it just like warms our hearts to feel like it is allowing us to potentially reach a bigger audience and develop a sense of community mm-hmm. with therapists, you know, on this continent and I hope beyond as well at some point. Mm-hmm. And with all of that expansion to other places in North America, I've also noticed that you have expanded with your collaborators. So you've brought in guest experts for kind of one-off workshops. How did you come to decide that it was time to bring in outside voices or offerings? What did that discussion look like? Really, it was also in response to the heightened awareness of reckoning with racism in our country Mm. too, that was happening in the midst of all this. And it's like, we're two white women, Mm -hmm. you know, a similar socioeconomic background at this point in our lives. And it's like so many voices need to be amplified Mm -hmm. and we want to build a community that reflects more voices than our. So that was a really important Mm -hmm. thing was to, you know, one thing that you often talk about is this embodied word, word. So doing things within your body and, and also doing the work means showing up in different ways and saying, okay, we're going to dial down our voices right now and amplify others' voices and just play around and see what fits. And how have those kind of guest offerings resonated with your community? Yeah, we've only done a few and fairly well. You know, there's a little bit of a variety as we try to figure out like how do how do we support these people and how do we make these connections of a community who might be used to hearing our voices and seeing our faces. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that was really important to us is not just having guest teachers, but having them be paid as well. So if I think about like our, from our financial model, like that was always really upfront and saying to the guest teachers, like, what is the minimum number of people that might need to be in your class for you to run it? Like we want, we value your time. And so we want to know how you value your time financially, not, you know, not put by us. We hope to keep doing more and more collaborations. We did like a course collaboration this year. We did some refresh class collaboration. So I guess if anyone out there is listening to this, hey, we are very (laughs) open for collaboration. And, you know, that really, as Sharon said, is in service of, supporting and serving a wide range of therapists and knowing that therapists are a whole range of people. And so we want to like be inclusive of lots of different ways of resourcing and knowing that like when we sense into what resource we create, a lot of that comes from our own experience as therapists, Mm -hmm. which again is only our own experience. And so knowing that there are other pain points for people who have different identities or different lived experiences in their past. I love that. And I love that you pay your your guest experts because I think, you know, as I have pivoted into this online world, there has been a lot of interest in people wanting to work with me, but they'll like drop you know, they, they won't pay me, right? They'll say like, oh, this is for exposure. And I have to kind of tune in to go what feels best for me and when is actually it, it uh, using my time in a harmful way. So I love that you're being very intentional about saying, look, we're not only bringing in people of different backgrounds and making sure that we can resource our therapists in a variety of ways, we're also making sure that we financially compensate these people for their time and expertise. So good on you for for doing that and really standing in those values there. We're actually way better at at paying other people than ourselves. Okay. (laughs) That actually doesn't surprise me. (laughs) Okay. So you guys do have some, some kind of therapist stuff going on there. All right. So like the common therapist theme that I hear is like, I can't charge for my services because, you know, I have to be accessible. And a lot of my work is, yes, you have to be accessible financially, but there are so many other ways of being accessible that just don't include money. So Sharon, I like that you kind of sprinkled that in. And you also made another big financial decision in Therapist Refresh with not just expanding your social media presence, but hiring somebody to help you with that. So how did... How did that conversation, like when did you guys decide, oh, we need some backup and we need to hire somebody else? 
I think when our growth outpaces our expertise, but also our energy and time. Mm, so mm. I guess this is probably something I've said a bit already in this podcast, but it's really how I think about money is so intertwined with what is my energy and what is my time. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, if something is going to drain me, if something is going to take me so many hours, like if Sharon, Sharon and I were like, man, we want to reach so many more therapists. But how many hours can we really put into this knowing that we want to set limits? And for both of us, you know, not just our main source of income being private practice, but where we spend our time. I mean, that's essentially a full-time job for both of us. So I think that drove a lot of the decision. What we really missed was thinking about that financially. We went ahead and like (laughs) hired people, you know, without without first thinking about how do we generate more income. Um, So, but I think that's like kind of, you know, running down the stairs. We're catching up to that now. We built beautiful partnerships and I think um, are really fortunate to work with people who can take the pace of growth down to something that's financially and energetically sustainable for Mm -hmm. us. So we're sort of in it right now, you know, building some new branding things, expanding our resources, and just trying to be really okay with doing that slow enough so that we don't burn ourselves out and can have some paid help. Hmm, because we've realized we have all this creative, loving energy to give, and we don't know as much about marketing and branding. Mm-hmm. Even when we went to hire people, we realized we didn't even know the right terms for things, mm-hmm. and that there would be different people to help us with branding or with website development or with SEO stuff or um, social media. So it's been an education for us, and we've pr- been trying to create the income so that we can grow bigger Mm -hmm. and bring in the business expertise um, with the hope that eventually it will allow us to do more of the pieces that we love and, and that does fall within our expertise. Mm, Love that. And, and I'm curious for folks who might be listening who are like, Oh, you know, I've got a colleague or I've got a friend who I could totally see going into business with. What would be some tidbits you might offer them, both from the financial and energetic backgrounds of of what are some things to be cognizant of if you were to enter into a business partnership with somebody? Yeah, I mean, I think we can both probably answer this. I could probably take a long time, so I'll just try to hold it for a couple of things. (laughs) Because I think this is like a really interesting thing. And Sharon's actually not the only person I'm business partners with. So this is something I think about a lot is I spend a lot of my week as business partners with others. One is I think a shared vision and and being willing to co-create and recreate that over time. Like understanding that even when you come together and you might be with a friend or colleague and say like, here's what we see inevitably organic growth will happen. There will be a symbiotic relationship where you might end up actually creating something that was like better and different than you even envisioned in the first place. So I think setting aside time and intention to have those conversations over and over, just like I talked about with money, I think having that be like a shared vision as well. Like how are things going to you financially? How are you doing with the vision? Is this what we want together? So that's a piece of it. And then I think the other is, um, and the therapist will really feel me on this, working with the people who like make you feel safe Mm. and speak to your heart. Like relationships Mm. are so healing. And I feel like my partnership with Sharon has blossomed into like a deep friendship and just a lovely part of my almost every day. I mean, at least weekly, but almost every day experience. And that's something that we, most of us as therapists are kind of, you know, relationally attuned and we practice that a lot. And so sensing into that and really listening to yourself, like, is this a person who I'm going to feel safe saying like, I need to put the brakes on, or this isn't financially worthwhile for me anymore, or I'm so excited about this new venture. Will you support my creativity? Mm Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And Sharon, what about you? What are some tidbits you'd offer to somebody who's interested in potentially pursuing a business relationship with somebody else? You know, as Karin says, the friendship part has just blossomed so organically. And I just Mm -hmm. want to echo that it's also meant so much to me, especially in these really difficult times. Like it really has helped me get through knowing we're doing something to help people and with this kind of fun, creative um, energy. So it probably is the challenge for us to step back and say, how do we formalize the business end of it 
because the creativity and the friendship just flow so easily. So we did early on uh, develop a contract with each other. Mm -hmm. Both of us took from other businesses that we had. We realized we'd use the same attorney. Maybe I'd, <laughs> I'd recommended one to you at some point. Yeah, you had. Yeah. Right? And so we realized that 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 person had kind of generated a very similar contract for both our two other businesses that we had with other people. But but that was the harder part. It's more. Mm. It's really natural to just hang out with Karin and like come up with fun ideas. But to really say, no, we have to formalize the business part of it. So in case we ever do run into a problem, we've mm -hmm. already established, you know, if one of us wants to buy the other one out or somebody has to cut back on something or how do we decide if we've contributed differently to like the creation of one course, how would we each get income from that? Mm -hmm. So I think it helped us to formalize it and look at somebody else's legal terms and just kind of know that we have this document somewhere that we never really, maybe we'll never go back to, we'll, we'll see, <laughs> but it's a, mm -hmm. it, it provides a secure foundation. Mm. And Sharon, thank you for bringing that point up because I think it can be really scary, particularly as therapists, to get things in writing, right? We want to mm -hmm. be very like, oh, things will just happen. It's okay. <laughs> We're, we've been good friends and colleagues for years. Maybe I did school with them or I did a class with them, right? And to say, yeah, all of that is wonderful. And maybe we should just have a piece of paper that protects each entity right. mm -hmm. is really wise. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if that was uncomfortable at all? It wasn't so much uncomfortable as it was kind of boring and tedious. <laughs> um, you know, like the legal ease is like sure. just even reading a paragraph and what sure. does this mean? I don't know. I didn't, it's uncomfortable thinking about the what if this gets complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So as we get ready to kind of wrap everything up, any tools, books, podcasts that you would suggest our listeners tune into if they were interested in either the money mindset piece that both of you seem to have really worked on or maybe tangible tools and takeaways? Well, we think they should listen to you, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> so subscribe don't to this know, podcast know, if yeah, you haven't yeah. already. <laughs> I saying, don't know if you've heard of Mind Money Balance, but I recommend. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, in all seriousness, I think the reason I, I feel where I am with my money mindset, and that's not to say I don't have hangups, but I think being in my own therapy has certainly helped. Like not like it's been financial therapy because that's sort of a, a newer and more specialized thing. But I think certainly like not being afraid to look at one's own emotions around things that can be difficult can be so helpful. So, um, you know, I, I guess as a therapist, and as a person who goes to therapy, I'm just like a huge fan of that process of doing healing work for oneself. I really do feel inspired and listeners, no one paid me to say this, but Lindsay, you are a huge source of inspiration for me, especially just feeling confident in making decisions that are financially sustainable. So it has been, I mean, I've known you, you know, a while, years, and it's been so wonderful to watch the birth and growth of mind money balance. Mm -hmm. And I really do. I really do appreciate your content and your messaging and grow from that. And outside of that, just two other things that I think inspire me is the other person on Instagram I follow is the healing strategy. I feel like there are some really inspiring like minded messages there of valuing oneself and not being afraid to dive into the business money side of things. And then in my personal life, I use YNAB, You Need a Budget, mm -hmm. which has just been really awesome. And again, one of those things that Sharon said so well, like sometimes that tedious work can end up feeling incredibly freeing. Mm -hmm. So that certainly mm -hmm. was the case for me. And wasn't there somebody else early on, Karen, that you were listening to a podcast on marketing specifically? Mm -hmm. I feel I can't remember who it was, but that I felt like I gave lots of ideas about that we should over time hire people to do things that weren't in our wheelhouse so much mm. sort of trying to do everything ourselves and how to get messages out there on social media and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I found some through um, Kajabi hosts are 
our, a lot of our courses are continuing ed things and going through some of their videos and tutorials about how to frame what you do and how to get people information about it. Mm. I also found helpful. Yay. Well, I will make sure to link to all of those resources. And Karen and Sharon, where can everybody find you? Therapistrefresh.com. Yay. Well, um, thank you. You can sign up there to be on our, on our yes. mailing list or to find any of our resources. They are written just like from the heart, for sure. So by the time some people listen to this, we are going through, I guess it'll be a little sneak preview. We're doing some rebranding and with that will come a name change that better represents the range of resources that we have right now. So we will be becoming the resource therapist, um, which is also our Instagram handle at resource. I wondered about so, that. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I know it's like a special mind money balance sneak peek. Yeah. Uh, but coming in 2021, because we just feel like being resource means having tools in your toolbox to pull for your own regulation as well as feeling confident and effective in your clinical skills. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And I'm sure everybody will make sure to follow and get on your email list and we will talk soon. so honored that Sharon and Karin joined us today for that beautiful interview. And before we get into the takeaways, I just want to share that I have personally been using their meditations. Now more than ever, they have free meditations listed on their website and they're kind of organized by what you need. Do you need to kind of ground? Do you need to energize? Do you need to return to safety? Those have been so helpful for me doing, I mean, I've used them pretty much since they came out, but I've really leaned into them this year when it feels like I need more more time and space to to really show up fully for my clients. And the other exciting thing is they have a beautiful event coming up. It's actually led by Karin, and it's going to go down on December 21st. It is a winter solstice yin and meditation all about nurturing your inner light. And it's in the evening if you're here, EST. It's going down on Monday, December 21st at 7.45 p.m. And yin, if you don't know, and I I might botch this a little bit, but yin is really a slow, gentle practice. So if you think about yoga and the first thing that pops into your mind are all these fast classes with like intense music and you're doing a breath of movement, this is the opposite of that. This is about holding still in a way that allows your body to fully relax into a pose. All of the postures are seated or reclined and you're you're holding them for several minutes. So it's not like you're holding a plank for several minutes. You're like laying down on the ground with a pillow behind your head for several minutes. It is so lovely. And I think we all need that now more than ever to register. Just head over to the show notes. I will make sure to put a link there, but I will be doing it. I cannot wait for this this guided meditation, this ability to hold still and and reconnect to our inner light. So I just wanted to make sure that if you wanted to work with Therapist Refresh and kind of get a sense of how they do things, this is going to be a great event for you to tune into. And with that, let's get into the takeaways. The first takeaway that I want to share is letting things kind of happen and unfold organically and naturally. Of course, they talked about this in terms of their partnership and creating Therapist Refresh, but I also think it's really important and we can apply it to our money. So instead of having to rush to fix things and get things done and check things off a to-do list, just noticing kind of what's going on and allowing it to unfold. This sounds a little bit like the past two episodes, past three really. So this one, the one with Alyssa. Lisa Adams, the one with Violetta Danawa, all of them have kind of reiterated the importance of taking things at your own pace and letting things happen organically. The second takeaway from my conversation with Sharon and Karen was, you know, leaning into that creativity, how Therapist Refresh for both of them as psychotherapists has allowed them a new outlet to think about how to do their work, right? As therapists, we have to show up in an interesting way where there's kind of this 
you're very much there as an expert and a healer and you're holding space for your clients and you're all in and you are using a part of your brain and a part of your body that you wouldn't normally use outside of the therapy room. So to tap into some of that creativity, whether it's in making graphics, whether it's in cultivating courses that you know that healers are going to want and need, whether it's, you know, a while ago we talked about, they did like this amazing half day retreat where we got goofy and silly and just had fun. The importance of getting creative in life. And of course, with our money is something that we cannot underestimate. It's important to get to, to get curious about how things are working and have a little bit of fun. You know, for some of my clients, they love to visually see the way that they are working towards their goals. There are so many free downloadable coloring sheets. You know, when you go into a, like a kindergarten classroom, pre COVID days, and they're working towards a goal and each day they like fill in that, that little thermometer as they work towards their goal. I like to do that with my clients who are more visual learners who like that aspect. So they can kind of say that they're working their way towards a goal. And online you can find ones that are like, you know, image of a car, if you're paying off a car or in the image of a vacation, if you're saving up for a vacation, it kind of gamifies it and makes it fun. But there are creative ways to get in tune with with our money. And then the other interesting thing that I took away from them was making sure that their guest experts are compensated for their time, not just in exposure. Holy wow. If I could tell you the number of times people have emailed me and said, I have this great opportunity for you and you're going to be paid in exposure. Oh my gosh. I don't even know. I mean, this happened all the time, but for whatever reason in September, October of 2020, I was getting those requests nonstop. So the fact that, that the founders of Therapist Refresh have intentionally said, yes, we want to bring in guest experts and we are going to make sure we compensate them financially is so in alignment with their values and their vision. And I just want to applaud them for that. And when it comes to personal finances, this is so important is spending in alignment with your values, making sure that the purchases that you make really light you up, really feel good when they can. Of course, you know, buying a a cart full of groceries might not be super values aligned, but you can, you know, to your, the best of your ability, make sure that you're purchasing foods that are locally sourced if, and when possible and or affordable. So thinking about how can you spend in alignment with your values, and for them, I I just really loved how they took their vision of growing Therapist Refresh, and they they also acknowledge, you know, we're we're kind of learning as we go, or I think one of them said we're kind of falling down the stairs as we go, or coming up the stairs as we go. You can re-listen to it for exactly how it was phrased. But I think that was so helpful just to say, look, you know, we learn as we go, and Yeah. So I I just wanted to point out those takeaways, letting things happen organically, folding in creativity to your work and spending in alignment with your vision and your values. And with that, I will see you on Monday. Tiffany McLean of Hey Tiffany is going to be here on the podcast. I'm such a fangirl of hers and I'm so excited for that conversation as well. And again, if you want to join Therapist Refresh for that yin, make sure to head to the link in my show notes and I will share with you how you can get on that event list. If you love this episode, take a screenshot and tag me on Instagram at mindmoneybalance with your favorite takeaway. I love seeing what resonates with my listeners and sharing it in my stories. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week right here. Neither the host or guests are rendering legal, accounting, clinical, medical, or other professional information. If you want professional help, please seek it out.